What's going on, everybody? It's me, the Prime Time, and I'm back. And I'm here with the Power Rangers guy. How are you doing? What's up? I'm good. I'm good. It's what is it? Wednesday? Is today Wednesday? Yes, it is. No, my days run together. I don't know. Oh. I'm good. It's I'm just disappointed we have no Beast Morphers episode on Saturday. But you know, yeah. How how long is that break? Gonna be like five months. Uh, September, late August, early oh. September. If I had to guess, they might do something special on a uh, National Power Rangers Day. But you know. We'll see. Do you know why they do that? Why they have it like that? Or you don't know? Uh, I mean, I can take a few guesses, but like my best guess is because they only do 22 episodes in a season and they want to space it out through the whole year. There's more than 22 Saturdays in a year. So, you know, they just want to space everything out. So, is that so? Who's idea? Is that a Nickelodeon thing or a Saban thing to only have it be 22 episodes? Mm, it's hard to say honestly because it might have been a Saban thing but it also might be a Nick thing but it has more to do with the fact that over the past 20 years production has gotten a lot harder to where it takes like a few weeks to film one episode of certain things so that's why they do that stuff like that okay because I was always wondering the old, all the other old seasons had like 60 episodes and the newer seasons only had 20 so it know. was like I think In Space and Lost Galaxy and all that had like 40-something, and then Wild Force had 30-something. Then most of the Disney seasons had 30-something. So Yeah, uh, but I, one thing I don't like is when they go to the super seasons. The super seasons are weird. They're definitely weird. It's It, it means we get one Sentai for two years, and I'm not a big fan of it either. Yeah, yeah super seasons are definitely weird. Um... They, they're they not fantastic, but it gives more time for, like, characters to develop more. Instead of rushing through one season in 22 episodes, we get 44 episodes for technically one season, but it's really two seasons. Why don't they just call it the one season? Why do they have to put the super on it? Like, the super because, don't even make it sound exciting. Yeah, no, nah, so the super season suck, but, like, the name. But the reason they do it is because technically it's a, you get a new season every year. Technically, air quotes. I mean, it could still be another season. Power Rangers had three seasons. The original had three seasons. Why can't other ones have three seasons? We gotta add Super. How crazy would it have been back in the day if they had uh, Mighty Morphin Super Power Rangers? It would have been atrocious. The name is already atrocious itself, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, No, like, Power Rangers is already, like, their names are atrocious, like, all the seasons. Like, I think the worst one, though, is Power Rangers Super Mega Force. Mm. As far as name goes, like, who who thought that would be a good idea? Let's go from Mega Force to Super Mega Force. What? I want to know how they're going to change. Are they going to have Super Beast Morphers or Beast Super Morphers or what? I think Super Beast Morphers sound better, but I, don't, I honestly don't know. What the way? to see till next year because i know we'll probably get something in let's say november december area well as okay. far as like the next season okay if i, I mean guess. i don't know why they i know they're they are having well as of now it's like two years left right now we got time oh. for the, the other beast morpher season then like another season completely right what, for their Nick contract? Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah they have, uh, when Beast Morphers started, they had three years, so after B the first season of Beast Morphers, they'll have two years, so they'll have Super Beast Morphers or Beast Super Morphers, whichever one they go choose to go with, and then they'll have enough time for one more season. They might renew for one season after that, just to get the Super Season out of the way, but unless they feel like doing, like, a throwaway season like Tokyuger, and just like throwing twenty two episodes together like a mini series like they did with Alien Rangers. But I don't see that happening. Where do you see um where do you see them going? Like what network do you see them going to after Nick? Or do you just see them stand with Nick? Mm, it's really hard to say because they're definitely not going to Disney again. 
Cartoon Network is more of like original based content and they don't like outside stuff. Hell, they got rid of Pokemon and that was one of their biggest draws. But if they go anywhere, it's really not where they should go. It's like they shouldn't go to any network. They should do like, hey, let's go to Netflix or let's or Hasbro should come out with a streaming app like DC has or Marvel's going to or Disney. I mean, mm. but honestly, people are just going to watch it for the Marvel stuff. But Hasbro should come up with a streaming app because they have what Transformers, I think Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Right, they do have a lot of stuff. I'm not sure they have Teenage Mutant Ninja. I know they have other stuff. I know they do the toys, but I don't know if they do the. I don't know. I don't know. I know they have My Little Pony and stuff like that. They have all those brands acquired, so it would just make sense for them to do a streaming app. You know, release an episode each week and do like specials here and there. In my opinion, that would make the most sense. But hey, I don't work for Hasbro. <laughs> that is true. I, I mean, mean, but if y'all are hiring, you know. <laughs> Give them a call. Yeah, like, mm, hook me up there. So, I mean, I, I, I just don't know. Like, I think so far the season is going good. Like, so far it's connecting. It's doing everything that everybody wanted. But it's still something missing. I can agree. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it's been a good season so far, but there's still that one element that makes Power Rangers Power Rangers missing that has been missing since RPM. Yeah, I don't know what it. I, I don't know what it is. Like everything is going good, it just don't give me that feel, that same feel. Mm. If I had to guess, it's because they they toned down a lot of the stuff. Because in RPM, you felt like there was like stakes. Jungle Fury, yeah. there was stakes. Operation Overdrive, eh. <laughs> <laughs> but. Here, that, that's one of the things I really want them to step up is the stakes. It's like, oh, we got to save the city, but what else? What else do we need to do to make sure Evox doesn't, like, take down the city or take over the world? Because when my, Lord Zed was trying to take over the whole planet, the whole universe, Evox is just like, I want to escape from the cyber dimension. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or well, maybe, maybe since it is Hasbro, they probably thought it out better and have, like, next year here be, like, an actual, like, physical villain. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, eventually Evox will get out of the cyber dimension. If, for those who haven't seen episode eight, Into the Cyber Gate, uh, Nate becomes a Gold Ranger, which his B spot is amazing. I love Steel. But at the end of the episode, Scrozzle fixes it. And so we, we can imply that next episode is going to be when Evox escapes from the cyber dimension. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was weird. I thought I thought that it wasn't even going to work. The uh, the bot. So when they morphed, I was like, I was confused. Yeah, the reason they did that was because that's what they did in the Sentai was have the Beast Bot be the Silver Ranger, and I get it. And I actually really like their costumes, the Gold and Silver Ranger. Yeah. The Gold Ranger reminds me of uh, Beetleborgs. Oh yeah, it does actually, with the thing in the front. Yeah. I mean, I I love Beetleborgs. I thought honestly, Beetleborgs is better than some Power Ranger seasons. So I can rewatch Beetle. There's some Power Ranger seasons I can't rewatch. <laughs> uh, Super Mega Force is that one of them? The only episodes I can watch out of that is uh, Silver Lining Part One and Part Two because Orion, my boy, I love Orion. Okay. okay. I can't rewatch Mega Force because Mega Force there was no redeeming quality about it. Did you see what happened between Blake Foster and Abe, the the, the Gold Ranger? Yeah, Nate Abraham um, something. I I saw it. I was, um, uh, I mostly stayed quiet about it because, like, what he said was wrong, and there was a lot of things he said wrong in that whole situation. He apologized for it, and, I mean, I get it, some people didn't take his apology, but you have to accept his apology. Like, you can't, my thing is, you can't bully a bully, because that doesn't yeah. work. As Rangers, as Ranger fans, we were taught better than that. You show people I, love and kindness and respect, even when they're not showing the same. So he apologized. Yes. Did it sound sincere? I mean, I don't know. I read it. That's all I'm going to say on that. But actions speak louder than words. 
I just, I just say, I just thought it was weird at first because obviously we all know him and what he did. You know, I think he's the one that kind of, I don't want to say him personally, but like when he joined, a lot of people start exiting the show. Oh yeah, a lot of people didn't like the concept of a a little kid ranger. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna say I love the concept either, but I'm not gonna say I hated his character because he was okay for what he was. Oh, I hated his character. I'll put it that there. I hated his character. I mean, that's fair. Because, like, obviously, his, his like, <laughs> I'm not even going to, I didn't, I didn't like his character too much because of, obviously, the kid aspect of it. And then him growing in the suit, obviously. Uh, that yeah, that made no sense whatsoever. It was like, mm, Power Rangers logic at its finest. Yeah, man. Uh, Anyways, I'm gonna get off of that topic, but okay. I have a uh, I have a question for you that I, I thought really hard about this question. I wanted to challenge you. So, if you could have a five ranger team of anybody from any season, who would those five be, and what would your six ranger be? Okay, if we're talking about the perfect ranger team. I got to go with my boy Andros as the Red Ranger, okay. obviously, because okay. Andros is by far my favorite. Uh, Blue Ranger, Peter Sidarso. Oh, okay. I, I, met, I met him at PMC, and I was like, yo, I'm he's he's an, an amazing guy. And then uh, let's go with Pink Ranger, Jen Scott, because oh, okay. she's such – She's so amazing. I love her. I, like she's by far my favorite female character of Power Rangers. She's so strong, yet she shows emotion. She's not like one of those overly strong characters that like you hate because they're like too strict. Over the over time, she shows emotion, and she showed emotion at the beginning before Alex died. So it's like Wes had to break her out of that shell, but she was still strong. Yeah, she sure had them getting to work though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, she was the true leader of the team because she was the most experienced in the whole Ranger aspect. But if I had to go with Yellow, I would say Summer from RPM because she brings okay. that, that like, she brings the team together. That's w- what her role was, and that's what she did with RPM. And that's why I, re- I really liked her. And then Black, I would have to say Dylan from RPM. Oh, okay, okay. He, <laughs> I just really like that he's one of my favorite characters. And then Six Ranger. Ooh, uh, honestly, if I had to pick a Six Ranger as of right now, I really like Nate as a Gold Ranger. I thought mm. it was it was paying homage to what how should have happened in Zeo with Billy. They should have made him the Gold Ranger, but because of backstage politics, they did not. And then they're making it right with Nate as the Gold Ranger in Beast Morphers. Okay. So that's, actually, that's my perfect that's, team. That's a solid. That's a solid little team. That's a solid. Te- what would you call them? Or you just don't uh, know. Uh, Power Rangers Super Team. I don't know. Power <laughs> Rangers Avengers. Power Rangers End Game. I don't know. I I know. Okay, you like Andros. Me personally, I think. Uh. I think a Red Ranger to me speaks out is a uh, Sean C W. I mean, not what's his name on the show? Carter. Carter. Carter Grayson. Grace. Yes. Uh, I think I'll go with Carter. Um, I wouldn't go with Jen only because I don't want I don't want them to butt heads on who was the leader and who's this. So That's fair. I would actually, you know what? I would take Caron. Oh, Corona. Corona. Yep. Love her. Love the trial of astronomer. Yeah. Maybe she can turn. Maybe she could be had that astronomer attitude while she's still good. Just she destroy everybody. Needs evil. to. Um, the Yellow Ranger. Actually, I wouldn't mind taking um. What's his name on the show? Dustin, Ninja Storm. He would bring that goofy element to it, that that comic relief, that but yeah. still, still a yep. pretty good character. Still a pretty good, yeah. He could, he could 
You got the power of Earth. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Can't never go wrong with the power of Earth. Uh, what color am I on? Blue? Yeah, I'm on blue, right? Wait. Yeah, blue. For blue, I, I'll pick Sky. Yeah, so, Sky was definitely a great Blue Ranger. Probably probably the best Blue Ranger. Um, I, It was really cool to see him as the Deca Ranger in the uh, Christmas card. Yeah, I mean, I would pick Sky. Like I said, I didn't want Jen and uh, Carter to butt heads, but I went mine and Sky and Carter button heads every now and then. Carter's like the, I feel like Carter's like the veteran ranger, and Scott's like the young pup who wants to be the veteran. Yeah, he wants to uh, live up to his dad's legacy a little bit too much, and that's what screws him sometimes. And then uh, for me, for my extra ranger, I will pick Trent, because Trent is... A uh, white dino? Yeah. Yes. Trent is I met just... him at a PMC. He was a really awesome guy. I actually got him uh, to sign a dino gem he had. I was like, y'all take one of those, and he's like, alright, oh, sign. And I'm like, hey. Awesome. My friend, uh, did you see on Instagram where they posted that they only had like 12 of those Dino Thunder full sets with uh, Dino Gems? No, I I didn't. I mean, I didn't. My like, friend got I didn't one of them. Set. He was like, he, he. I was like, as soon as we went to the convention, I was like, Deontay, you need to go get that now. And he I, he was like, he took off like the flash. And I'm like, okay, there, we, there it goes. And he... he walked out with it he was like yeah hundred dollars well spent and i'm like i mean if you like it you know yeah i, w- I was really considering getting like a steve cardenas had like a power coin but it was like a very unique power coin it had the um uh, red the dragon thunder sword yes that's what i it got had. one for my brother oh because the, the front and the back was nice and he had like a, a all black one a black and gold one and he had like a gold and um i guess gold and silver one I think I got the black and gold one. I don't remember. I said they, those were. Oh, they look so good. It's like, he, dang, these are amazing. Yeah, I met Steve at uh, PMC. PMC was so much fun, honestly. Yeah, did you go to the, Did you go to the Angel Grove prom or not? No, see, I uh, wanted to go, but I was in line for to meet Jason David Frank basically all day Saturday. What well, was oh, a long time? I'm were, not gonna say it was all day, oh, but oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How long were you standing in line to meet JDF? See, the thing about that is I didn't even really want to meet him because I met him at Wizard World Richmond 2016. It was my friend Deontay. He wanted to meet him. And I the there was a picture that had uh, Catherine Sutherland, Jason Font, and Jason David Frank on it from the anniversary episode. And if mm-hmm. you bought it from one of them, all three of them signed it. I mean, it was 150 bucks. And I'm like OCD. So I'm like, yo, I have to get it signed by all, all three of them. Otherwise, it's going to drive me crazy. So... Sure. That's the only reason I waited in line to get that signed because I didn't know if my friend could get it signed along with his other stuff. So I was like, "Yeah, I'll stand in line." But we went back to the hotel room and I passed out. I was like, "Oh god!" It was a long day. Dude. I'm on. I'm on East Coast time. West Coast time really messed me up because I would wake up at 5 a.m. because it would be 8 a.m. my regular time, and I'm like, "Dude, now try to go back to sleep." It just didn't work. I mean, uh, I I like I travel a lot, so for me it was like a normal wake up in the morning. I like for me, I just take naps during the day. I try to take like a small nap here and a small nap there to keep me, you know, on top. Yeah. So I don't. You should have went to the prom, honestly. Like, <laughs> it yeah, was I amazing. probably should have, but is what it is. Next time they have something, you have to go. Oh yeah, I'm definitely. I'm. I'm. Me and my friend John are already planning on going to PMC 2020. So we'll probably go. We'll probably have one next time, and I'll probably go because we're planning on staying out there for a few days. So I mean, I'll just get me a Red Bull and be fine. You mean like a few days before, like before, or a few days after the, the whole thing? Um, I, we haven't decided yet because me and my friends want to go to Disneyland and do a uh, few things in Cali while we're there. Okay. But I don't know honestly. We we haven't decided. I, I know I've. I've been saving up money already for PMC, so we'll have to wait and see. So, if you had to choose which one, if you had to choose which one are you most, like, willing to go to, if you got it free and everything, would you rather go to PMC or San Diego Comic Con? Hmm. Honestly, San Diego Comic Con doesn't do much for me because I'm not a big fan of, like, everything there. 
So okay. I'd rather go to PMC. Okay, that's understandable. I mean, I'm a big fan of like Arrow and Flash and stuff, but other than that, like, it's not worth it to me. Okay, I know San Diego Comic Con. That's like the one place like they um build like all the trailers and they they show you everything that's gonna come out and stuff like that. Yeah, see, the thing about that is I can just watch them on my phone. I don't have to be there live. The only thing I'm really hyped about seeing live is, like, the new Power Rangers stuff. But, you know, the only thing I'd want from, like, San Diego Comic-Con is, like, the Power Rangers exclusive stuff, which I... What did I get? I got the uh, green Psycho Ranger. That was a... What was it? San Diego Comic-Con exclusive? Or was that New York Comic-Con? Probably was New York. Don't remember. It was one of those, though. And then there was that Entertainment Earth exclusive uh, Psycho Silver. I got one of them. And then I got, of course, I got PMC uh, exclusive Lord Draken. Okay. Uh, speaking of, have you um, seen have you seen images lately of, of what they're trying to do? I don't know what it is. I know it's Jason David Frank, Jason Font, uh. Johnny Young Bosch and Sierra Hanna. Yeah, I actually did see a picture that I have no idea. I shared it on my Facebook. I think it was the Power Rangers guy, but I have no idea what they're trying to do with that. Honestly, I don't know. If I, I I couldn't even guess because I saw it. I just shared it. Like I usually share all the Power Ranger stuff like that I see, but like as far as that's concerned, I have no idea. Yeah, it looks like Avengers stuff. It might be like futuristic rangers i know jenna frank was on set uh it, it's done by bad in the sun so yeah, I'm they, sure they did it has a, some... didn't they do the re the ryu thing too yeah they've done everything with jason david frank as far as like ryu versus uh the green ranger and then the white ranger versus scorpion and then that short mm-hmm. film for uh legacy wars they did mm-hmm. that the street fighter versus power rangers it, it, so they did it looks like green. Did they? Or was that somebody else? Do what? The Shadow Grid uh, little teaser. I think that was them too, honestly. Because okay. J- JDF works closely with Bad in the Sun, and I'm pretty sure it was them. Yeah, I know. He did He did uh, another character for them. It was like Bloodshot or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Bloodshot in the Value yeah. Universe. <sighs> it was a forgettable hero, honestly. It's not the best one he's ever done but it's it's still another hero he's done he has a lot of names to his uh resume i mean a lot yeah. of ranger names you know all that which one would you take away not exclude not excluding turbo because he kind of don't even mention turbo honestly yeah he barely ever mentions turbo i think his least iconic character was the besides turbo would be the Red Zeo, because everybody knows Mighty Morphin, everybody knows uh, White Ranger and Green Ranger, and a lot of the younger fans who didn't watch Mighty Morphin knows Dr. Oliver, Dr. O, as the Black Dino Thunder Ranger. So, by that comparison, you'd have to get rid of the Red Zeo Ranger. Not saying it wasn't a good character, just saying it's his least iconic role in the Power Rangers universe, because everybody knows Lord Dracking because of the comics. Okay. I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I personally look. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. This might be a shocker to some people. I am not the biggest fan of Tommy Oliver. Just not. See, I'm not like a huge fan of Tommy Oliver. Like, I like Tommy. Don't get me wrong. He's he's easily the most iconic Ranger of all time. Is he the best Ranger? No, he's not. Thank you, thank you. That's all I needed. Everybody say he's the best just because he's been five different Rangers or whatever. I mean, it doesn't mean uh, anything. I mean, I think, it, it counts for something, but not as far as like the best ranger of all time. He didn't make the ultimate sacrifice on the battlefield like uh, Kendricks did. Yeah. I'm sorry, he just didn't. Would he have done it? Yes, but he didn't. He didn't I face like the a... ranger ranger killers and the uh, psycho rangers. The space rangers did that. No, I feel like just not... Tommy. Is like the I don't, he's like the John Cena of uh the Power Rangers. He gets pushed a lot, you know. He gets that edge a lot. Some people like it, some people don't. But uh, I always find it weird though. 
Like, because everything is like Tommy revolves sometimes. And I'm not, I'm not the only one that think this. Yeah, everything is Tommy centered, but he. D- the thing about Jason David Frank is he'll do anything for the Power Rangers universe. He'll be yeah. like, oh, yeah. you want me to promote this? No problem. You want me to star in this? No problem. You want me to be at this panel? No problem. Not a lot of other actors would do that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, that's true. I can I commend can't, him on I, that kind of stuff. He's the face yeah. of the franchise. Yeah. But uh, that it just messed me up, especially especially this anniversary episode. That messed me up so bad. It was it was a decent episode, but again, it was too Tommy focused. Too Tommy but, focused. I mean, what else did you expect? They were trying to get the original uh, fans back, so they were like, "Oh, Tommy, Tommy this, Tommy that, Tommy Soul of the Dragon, Tommy." Like it, it was kind of expected at that point. So they wanted to promote Soul of the Dragon so people would read it as well as get older fans back in. Because the, by doing that, you're getting back the fans that watch Mighty Morphin, getting back the fans that watch Dino Thunder, and then getting the hardcore fans and as well as the new fans that watch Ninja Steel. Do you think we see uh, Rangers come back for Beast Morphers? Any Rangers come back for Beast Morphers? I want to say yes, I do, because we have seen a lot of them in New Zealand, but that has mostly been for like conventions and stuff. So I want to say Hasbro is going to do us a service and give us a good team up, but only time will tell, honestly. Uh, so okay, is that a? I've seen a Sentai episode. Was it like a Dino Thunder, Dino Charge, Mighty Morphin, and Beast Morphers? Yeah, it was it was all the I, I haven't seen the I haven't seen the whole thing. I've just seen clips here and there. But yeah, that's what it looks like. It's all of their Sentai's uh teaming up, which would be a good thing. But the thing about that is, um the Dino Charge Sentai in um in Japan came out after the Go Busters one. I think it was a season afterwards. So we're like flip flopping their seasons. Okay. I just asked because uh I know that would be cool if they if they decide to do that, or they could decide to do their original one like like they did last year. Even though they used parts from the movie, they still did original fight scenes when it came to the end. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see them maybe bring back the Ninja Steel Rangers, or maybe bring back like I don't know RPM or they, they don't have in, to bring like... back the Ninja Steel Rangers. They could just bring back Christiani, and I'll be all right. Yeah. I don't even want to start off. I don't even want to start that list off because I'm not gonna start that list off because she can she yes. can probably kill me with a gun from like a mile away with a scope. Oh my on god! It. I see her clips on Instagram. I'm like, okay, I'm you not got gonna it. Say anything? Like, yeah, you got it. Oh man, that's a long list. That's a long list. I could get into. I'm not gonna touch it. I'll yeah. probably touch it next time, even though I say I'm not. But probably. Anyways, <laughs> what do you think about the legacy that is being left on Power Rangers? Um, the legacy is definitely deep. Mm, there's a lot of fans out there, but I think uh, some of the Ranger actors need to live up to the legacy, in my opinion, uh, okay. because they're out there doing things that you probably shouldn't do as a role model to kids and older people. But the legacy of Power Rangers itself, it's a good one. It teaches kids, hey, don't bully. Uh, just do the right things. Look, having a moral compass. So, in my opinion, they're, the legacy's good. Yeah, I know uh, I know some people do try to get away from that. Like, I went to uh, the Avengers uh, premiere, and I just so happened to be sitting next to Emma, who is... Um, the yellow Dino Thunder Ranger. And oh, she shoot. hates she hates when people call her Kira. She just hates it. I know she, she wants to get away from that and do other stuff and be, be Emma, but I think if you're a Power Ranger, you just gotta live with that. Yeah, see, the thing about the Power Rangers is the fandom is super strong, so once you're casted in a Ranger role, that's what you're gonna be known as for a long time and you just gotta accept it. I get you do other roles, that's fine, 
but a lot of people are going to recognize you as your ranger role. I know one of the slickest is uh Michael Michael Copan because uh, he he's in a lot of stuff, but he's in stuff that girls will see him in. So like all his female fans will know him from that stuff, and all his male fans will know him from Power Rangers. And he yeah, said yeah, he never- actually. I actually uh, met him at Fayetteville Comic Con. I saw him at PMC. I didn't get his autograph, but I I was uh, hanging out with Chris Christopher Kamen Lee at uh, Fayetteville, and I was sitting behind his uh, his booth. We I mean his table, and it was me and I think Rando, who is a uh, Chris's comic book art- artist, and uh, oh. my Michael and his girl left their table. They're like, "Hey, can y'all watch it?" So we sat behind both their tables, and was like, "All right." Because you know they don't want anybody stealing stuff. Which, if you steal stuff at conventions, you're trash. I'm just saying. Yeah. That, yeah. Sorry, I don't care how much like you want it, and if you don't have the money, sorry, but don't steal stuff. Like these actors work hard, and they they that's just how they pay their bills. Most of them. Yeah. I mean, JD, yeah, he'll sign stuff for free though. Like I went to uh, when I was at uh, Wizard World Richmond in 2016, I had my morphers with. And he's like, oh, you want me to sign him? I'm like, oh, I didn't pay for that. He's like, I don't care. But th- that is how they make their money. So, uh, that some like, for example, when I went to my first con, my family was like, oh, you going to pay? You going to pay this and this? I was like, yeah, that's, that's how they get their money. This is kind of how they live. So, yeah, I know I, I support them. I like them. Yeah, I have no problem paying the prices because. Like, all my room, like, the top of it is filled with nothing but autographs. And honestly, between all of them, it was over $1,000 for everything. Oof. Okay. I mean, I don't really care. Like, my... And then I'm... I got a Forever Red script signed by Christopher Kamen Lee. I got okay. an autograph from him. He called me his favorite YouTuber. Just throwing that out there, guys. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. You can you use that next time. Yeah. Next time you see him, you should have him say it on camera. Just, just so you got to document it. So every time you can see it, you can pull that up and brag about it. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably hang out with Chris again. He He's a uh, comic book, book artist. actually did my logo for uh, the Ranger Club, which is what I call my subscribers, which is just uh, Chris's helmet. You know the Bullet Club logo? I'm sure you Yeah. Do. It's uh that, but instead of the guns, it's Spiral Saber. It says Ranger Club. You know, it's a cool little logo, and I like it. So I have it on my shirt, and then on a hoodie. Definitely be wearing it at PMC 2020. Probably I'm gonna wear it at Galaxy Con, which me and my friend Sean are going to. Hopefully, we get something going there, and then we're gonna be at Raleigh SuperCon, which okay. is July something. But JDF will be there, and so will David Yost, and then we're gonna be. We're actually. Gonna be guest at uh his uh it's his network's first convention in buffalo new york or uh niagara falls new york it's called podcon it's where you like you pay ten dollars you can come in listen to your favorite podcast from that network and or different podcast you know all right guys we had to cut the interview short but that doesn't mean anything you can follow the power rangers guy follow him on youtube at the power rangers guy follow him on twitter at Power Rain, Power underscore Rangers underscore Guy, and Instagram Power underscore Rangers underscore Guy, and uh, follow him on Facebook is the Power Rangers Guy, and uh, obviously have a good time. Prime time is all the time.